So as we are working in the basement in the background, I think it's time to do a good old fashioned furniture flip. What do you say? I don't want to scare her. I don't know about you, but I am really craving to flip a piece of furniture. I've had this chest downstairs for mm, probably about three months, just sitting there for the perfect opportunity. And I have such an opportunity. I am getting a second booth in the antique mall that I'm at, and I need a chest to store some toys that are going to be for sale in this booth. So I need to make over this chest. This chest had a failing finish, which I had to take off. So I tried the oven cleaner method on this chest and it worked partially, but not all the way. So today we are gonna take this piece and we are gonna take it just a little bit further. Hi guys, and welcome back to this channel where we do DIYs, designs, and furniture flip. Speaking of a furniture flip, I've been working on the basement laundry room for way too long and I need to get my creative juices going. I've had this chest downstairs in the basement for mm, probably about three months. I wanted an auction. It needed a lot of help. It needed some work. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't have a reason to make it over. But the antique mall that I have a booth in is going to let me open up a second booth. And this is gonna be all about children. So I need a place to store some children's toys that I'm going to be selling. And this chest happens to be perfect. <laughs> this mouse sander does a really good job at getting into these creases here. So that is why I am kind of using it first. However, I quickly realized that this finish is probably laughing at me at the moment because it is not coming off. And cedar chests smell wonderful. If you find that your cedar chest has lost its fragrance, all you need to do is do a quick little sanding and it will refresh the scent. And although that mouse sander works great to get into the little creases um, when you sand, this finish was super durable. Even though I did do the oven cleaner method and partial uh, varnish came off, it was still pretty tough. So I am going through my whole arsenal of tools that I can just to get this finish off because I am very dedicated to have a nice raw look on this top of this piece.
And even though I use an orbital sander and I kind of sweep off any of the debris, I do find that you will get some squirrel marks. Um, those little round little marks that are left over by sanding and what I usually do after I do any kind of machine sanding is I will go back through a piece and I will hand sand it um, and just try to get those little marks out just so the piece looks nice and professional. And now I'm going up in my grit of my sandpaper. Right now I am sanding at 120. I previously sanded at 100 grit, 80 and 100 grit. And now I'm doing the 120. And you guessed it, after I do that, I will go back and I will hand sand with the 120 just to get a very beautiful finish on the top. And a quick little tip, if you have those little crevices in any of your pieces, this carbine scraper does a very good job at getting into those corners uh, that sometimes finish can be left in those crevices. And I keep seeing little bits and pieces of this finish still on top of this chest. This carbine scraper, I'll link it below. It is a beautiful little tool. It helps scrape off any of those finishes that you really want to get off. However, you do have to be slightly careful using it. You will nick the wood, if not careful. Now that the top is all finished and sanded, let's move on to the feet. These feet are so sweet and I am in luck because none of those feet need any repairs. So my plan is just to keep them as they are and flat head screws are my nemesis. I don't care for them at all.
And this screw that I am getting out is pretty interesting. I've not ever really seen a misprint or misstroke flathead screw. Um, that's what you see the little crisscross there. I just thought that was just pretty neat. Um, of course, when we put the feet back on to this piece, I'm going to use the original hardware um, because it belongs. It belongs to this chest and so we're going to keep it all together. And sometimes things happen when you're not looking. It just so happened that a neighborhood dog came around and tinkled on this piece. You see me scrubbing in this area here. Um, we will see if it can come out, but we will just give this whole piece a nice little wipe down, but concentrate on that little corner there. I don't want to scare him. What are we going to do? We can't go outside and walk. The squirrel's out there. Shall we go? You have to go back to his home. Oh, the cat's going to love you. Hi, mister. Oh, there he goes. So, he's currently trying to look for the bird feeder, which I have moved. Ha 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 keep him on his toes or fingers. What do squirrels have? I'm not sure. He's quite upset at me at the moment. All right, let's go outside. Okay, so there's a reason why you're looking at the chest upside down. Not upside down, but on its side. Um, the reason why is because after I was looking at it, I posted on Instagram what color we should paint this side and this side. But the reason why this little guy is on its side is after kind of taking a look at it, this little spot here, this trim was coming off. So I don't have any clamps long enough and Oliver's going to inspect. I don't have any clamps long enough to go from this to here. So what I had to do was glue that little trim piece and flip it on its side so the weight can hold it down. So we are going to flip it over and see how much, how well that worked. I'm not sure if it worked. I was so exhausted after sanding it and being very upset that the dog peed on it after I sanded it and cleaned it twice. So I cleaned it off, but it stained it. So I'm not sure what to do right here in this little spot. I've cleaned it with on dish soap. I've cleaned it with ammonia. Um, it being raw wood, it just soaked it in. Um, so what I think I might do is just try to top coat it and deal with it. See if it really pops up. And if it pops up, then our two hour sanding session is for naught. And we will have to paint the whole thing, which makes me sad but that is what we're going to do today they had like a little decorative uh thing mabob motif decorative iron work right here on this side and on this side and um, the reason why they're not here anymore is that one side had it the other side didn't so I don't know what happened to this poor chest of drawers to, you know, deserve to get one side off, one side on, but 
we have to fill these little itty bitty holes and we are going to prime it. Okay, friends, all I have on hand is Bondo and Dixie Mud Brown, so Dixie Mel Brown is the winner. Boy, it doesn't look very, uh, <laughs> appetizing, does it? I tend to overfill my holes. I've noticed in the past that if I just put uh, just enough on and keep it flush with the surface, that when it dries, it will shrink and then it'll make a little divot of where the hole is. So I have learned to overfill um, the holes and then when I go back to sand it, I can sand it all down and I do not have to reapply any of the um, filler. Okay, so I have filled in all the little nooks and crannies with Dixie Bell mud. And we're just gonna let it dry. I think while I'm letting it dry, while I'm letting this dry, I'm gonna go ahead and top coat the top and see if that stain, the puppy dog stain, We'll bleed through. Let's do that. I absolutely love this topper for this paint. It comes both in the small and the large and it helps pour the paint, but then also not get the rim messy. So I will link that product down below. I love it. I typically brush on my top coat. I have seen people spray it on. I've also seen people use um, a sponge. I normally just brush my top coat on and if you use a very soft bristle brush, you do not get those brush marks. I am absolutely loving how the top coat is just bringing out the vibrant colors in this wood. It looks stunning.
And when I'm done with the edging, I will go back and run my hand around it just to get all those drips off. Okay, it looks really, really good. This spot here turned out, turned out good. You can't even tell the little dog um, scenario happened. So this is nice and dry now. We can do a quick little sand on this. We can sand this and this together and prime this. So let's get working on that. We're trying to do this inside because we don't want any more puppy dog accidents on this piece. I don't know if my heart can take that. So let's sand and start priming. And my primer of choice is going to be Ben's primer. I do have a clear spray uh, a schlack that I could use, but I'm just electing to roll on the Ben primer. And for convenience sake, I'm going to line my tray with some foil. When I'm done with a primer, I can just take the foil out and dispose of that and my tray will be as good as new. When I can, I usually put my pieces on furniture movers so I can just roll them around and get to all the sides. They are really handy when it comes to restoring and painting furniture. I'll list the ones that I have below, but I've got two big ones and then two on the smaller side.
And I am painting over that faux keyhole that you see on the front of this chest and that's okay I am going to go back later and just put some rub and buff on it just to bring it back that golden color Okay, we have our first coat done, and I can tell you already we are going to need probably two. I'm hopeful for two. I will begrudgingly do three. How about that? But it's already bleeding through this Ben's primer, and I'm glad that I primed because when in doubt, always prime. Always. But we're going to let this dry. We're going to do a quick little sand in between and then we'll do coat number two. I'm going to put this saran wrap and then we can reuse our little roller and chip brush. Okay. I'll see you in about one second. For these sweet little legs, we're just going to give it a, a quick little scuff sand and we're just going to top coat it. We're going to keep these sweet, beautiful legs just how they are. Just going to scuff sand them just to get any failing finish off. Oh, what I'm using, a surf prep medium. You don't have to have a surf prep to buy the sanding discs. So I usually just buy the sanding discs with the foam pads and stick them on my sander that I have. Sure, I would love a surf prep. I would love it intensely. Or a fest tool. Currently, I just don't have the funds for it. So we will make do with what we have. But these do help get into those little nooks and crannies, all those little itty bitty groups. The back side. All right, we are all done with that bit. Just cleaning up. And how I know that they are going to be beautiful with just a top coat is when I run some water over it and wipe it off, this is what it's going to look like. So I know they are going to be very sweet. I don't think they're they're going to match the cedar perfectly, but that's all right. I like wood. I know you wouldn't have thought that because I just painted that piece, but I love the look of wood. All right, now let's top coat them. All right. Three more to go, and I'll see you back in a moment. 
All right, if you are not following me on Instagram, you need to go over there and check me out. My handle is Oak in Iron. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because on Instagram, I put a poll of what color I should paint this chest. It was between black and green, mainly because I wanted to shop my stash that I have over there. I have plenty of colors, but I thought black or green would look really good with the wood top here. So on Instagram, I put a poll and 67% wanted green. So therefore, we are going to do green. And I think it, it will turn out lovely, um, especially with this shade of green. Now, I've had this shade of green in my stash for a while now. I wanted to use it, um, but I chickened out before. But... The color is beautiful and it, it happens to be in this Valspar cabinet and furniture paint uh, enamel. I've never tried it before. As you can tell, it's pretty full. Uh, I've never tried this before. I just sampled on the side just to see what the color was, um, but it is absolutely gorgeous paint. I don't know. We need to invent, um, well, smell a vision because it doesn't smell, but, um, you know, touch a vision. It is just absolutely, it's kind of like, hmm, waffle mix. It just feels nice and thick and luxurious if paint can feel that way, but 67% wanted this bad boy in green and we are going to paint it on. I got the Klingon brushes, the S50 Shorty. I love these guys. They self-clean. They're beautiful brushes. They're, it's a thick brush, but it's also very, very soft. So this brush is going to put on this paint beautifully, I think. So let's, enough chit chat. Let's get into it. Again, we're inside because we are staying away from any puppy accidents. So bear with the inside video. I hope it's going to turn out well, but. Oh, gotta love that. Oh my God, it is beautiful paint. Beautiful, beautiful paint. The brush is on lovely. Nice and thick. I don't know if it's a combination of this brush and the paint, but What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I love it. I love it. I'm going to hush up now and I'm going to just paint and you guys can enjoy and watch. Anybody's worried where Kitty is. He's my, he's my shadow. If I wasn't 
worried about bleed through. I don't think that I would need to use a primer with this paint. We'll have to try this paint out on its own with and without a primer just to check out its durability. But for now, it is going on very beautifully, very softly. It's gliding on like butter. Typically, I do not tape off my edges whenever I do any kind of edging work. I, though, will when I get tired or I feel like I'm getting sloppy, then I will stop what I'm doing and I will definitely tape off those edges. You can do it either way, whatever, however you feel comfortable. If you feel comfortable taping off edges and you like that hard line look, then by all means, tape off. If you like a very organic line, um, taping off may not work for you and you can just freehand your line. Either one, I do both. in your way no i'm never letting go now that i have it with you when you kiss me it's like the stars fall out the sky onto my heart to cover up what i don't want to show i let you in deeper than i let anyone else before All done with coat number one. We're gonna let it dry and then we'll do coat number two. I'm done with coat number two. I'm not sure how I feel about this paint. Um, 
and it could be user error so let's keep that in mind I don't know how long I have to wait before I recoat because Lowell's put the sticker over the instructions so I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to wait to recoat I waited two hours but I don't think that that's enough because when I put my second coat on it started to kind of take a little bit of the first coat off so I'm wondering since it has it says oil enriched I'm wondering if you have to wait um, like a day or so between not a day but 24 hours I don't know I have to research three hours 24 hours some of the um, paints that have like the oil in there you have to wait a little bit longer to recoat so um, I'll keep that in mind um, but it, it goes on beautifully it's nice and it's soft and with this brush it does go on beautifully okay so this is coat number two I'm gonna have to touch up little places like like right here I don't know if you can see that on camera there's just some like streaks of white where we primed down here but I can't go over it again because I'll start taking off the first coat on it I'm gonna let it dry overnight and then we are gonna come back and reassess the situation tomorrow I'm hoping Oh my gosh, I'm hoping that we don't have to sand this down and redo it. I'm really hoping we don't have to. Um, we'll see. But it looks beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful color. It matches well with the top. So we'll see. Uh, I know I keep on saying that. I'm... Oh, I'll just be heartbroken if I have to take it off and start over again because I'm kind of in a time crunch. This has to get to the booth by August because that is when we uh, get that second booth that this is going in. So, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Um, we'll see in the morning. Good night. Okay guys, I believe that it was me. I was actually trying to probably get this done faster than I should have. And I believe that I did not wait enough time in between coats. So lesson learned, um, chalk that one up to me. I do believe the paint turned out beautifully. Um, Let's turn it around and give it a scratch test. I really don't want to sand it again. I really don't want to redo this. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that it passes scratch test. And if you guys don't do the scratch test on your piece of furniture, you should. If it can't survive your fingernails, then it probably is not going to survive real life, in my opinion. In my humble opinion. Anyway, that's enough chit chat, enough hesitation. Let's turn you around and let's do the scratch test. Hi. Look at you paint. Yeah. Look at you. You're looking good. All right. Verdict is is finalized that is a really good paint and guys I don't know if you can tell but it is beautiful and I don't need a top coat so I'm done painting all I have to do is put the legs on and re-screw that in because that is out and then we are done Yes, we are completed with this project. Let's put the legs on.
Before we see the finished chest, we have to remind ourselves what it looked like before we did all the work. It had some failing finish. It had some missing little corner bits and pieces. It had a safety latch that did not work. And it had some trim pieces that were coming off. So here it is before. What do you guys think? I think it turned out really, really good. I love the color. I love how we kept the wood on the top and it still has its cedar smell because we sanded in the inside. We refreshed the cedar smell. I am so excited that we got this quick little project out of the way. I am really glad that we did not have to re-sand and I am happy to report that paint is beautiful. And that's it guys. It has a beautiful finish on its own. You don't have to top coat and it looks beautiful. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of this quick little cedar chest flip. Next week, we'll be back in the laundry room makeover, but I think for now, I am super glad to be creative and to um, actually work on a piece of furniture because I, working on furniture is very cathartic. I love it so much. It's, it's like therapy to me, but tell me down below what you guys think of our project today. And like always, if you don't mind giving a little love tap to the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, we are growing an amazing family here. And uh, the bell notification if you wanna know the next time I post. But that is it, it's a pretty lengthy video guys. There, it is jam packed with a lot of information, but I will see you guys in the next video. Stay amazing. Have a great day.